المتقين <تصفيق> The Quran begins with the dot of the day of Bismillah and ends with the scene of Anas. And in between each hoof, each layer, each ayah is an ocean. And one can dive into that ocean, whether it be a hurf or an ayah, and bring out whatever jewels Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows upon us and our ability to carry them. Just as the Quran begins with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, and then with the opening of hearts with Surah Al-Fatiha, the opening, then it begins the exposition of the themes of the Quran, or the theme of the Quran. Very often I'm asked by people, especially those who are educated in Western universities and the Westerners, that they have difficulty focusing on the Quran because it seems unrelated to them. Inshallah, what we'll do today in the next 20 minutes is to provide a thematic underpinning to the Quran so that especially the young people when they engage in conversations with Westerners and those who are educated in science and technology are able to convince them of the central message of the Quran. Imagine if you would a giant universe revolving around a central axis. And in that universe, there are many universes, many stars. And the central axis is La ilaha illallah. What is the axis of the Quran? It is La ilaha illallah. The central message of the Quran is La ilaha illallah. The focus of the Quran is La ilaha illallah. And around the central axis, you have multiple themes that support the central thesis, La ilaha illallah, which is not complete until we say Muhammad Rasulullah. What we will do today, inshallah, is to focus on Surah Al Baqarah. Why Surah Al Baqarah? Because the Surah Al Baqarah presents difficulties to a large number of people that look at the 286 ayahs. <coughs> and the 6,144 huruf of Surah Al-Baqarah, and they say, well, I'm discouraged, it's too long, it is whatever. See, there are multiple ways to read a book, and what I'm trying to do is to bring it to the level of some of the young people so that they can understand it. One is a linear way, you can start with the beginning to the end. The other one is a, a central hub and the outward spokes. Those who deal with distributed systems in internet technologies, for instance, would probably relate to it somewhat in a distant fashion. There is a central hub of la ilaha illallah, and the spokes lead out and lead in all the way, again back to la ilaha illallah. Surah al-Baqarah consists of 286 ayah. What is an ayah? 
An ayah, by definition, is a sign. It's a dynamic arrow that came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and writing on it, you can go back to the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a dynamic arrow, write on it. An alternate analogy is to say, it is like the pupil of the eye. You open it, it opens one vista. And that vista has multiple doors. And you open each door, and that leads to other vistas ad infinitum. Until it reaches to the infinity, and you get tired, and you come back to where you started from. An ayah is self-sustained eloquence. An ayah is fire that burns, though fire has not touched it. Each ayah is self-contained. And another analogy is to say that there is a vast panorama of a jewel studded canvas. At the center of it is la ilaha illallah. And you have these other jewels all the way around, each one of them thematic, that brings your attention back to La ilaha illallah. In Surah Al-Baqarah, you have at least seven themes. This is to make it easy for young people to read the Quran. There are multiple ways to approach it, inshallah. We'll see how far we can get in the next 20 minutes. There are seven themes in Surah Al-Baqarah. And to summarize them, because you'll remember them, if I summarized in the beginning, inshallah, we'll probably also capture them again at the end. They are the following. First is the introduction in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduces the book. The requirements for reading the book. For whom it is intended. What's the purpose of the book? And the divides of humanity into three categories. Those who have faith, those who have no faith, and those who are hypocrites. The second theme of Surah Al-Baqarah is the creation of man. Creation of Adam. You'll see that in ten simple ayahs. Simple because they're not long. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes so much that it is impossible for any combination of scholars for a lifetime to create even one single portion of the single ayah. The creation of man and the attributes of man and the circumstances surrounding the creation of man. The third portion of it has to do with history. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supports the basic premise with the history of Bani Israel all the way to the appearance of Isa alayhi salam. And then the fourth theme is the construction of this new community, the community of Islam. Starting with Ibrahim alayhi salam, his appearance and the construction of the Kaaba and the direction of the Qibla, all the way to the rules and regulations, the laws, the Sharia that governs this new community. For what? It is a community which is a balanced community, believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, enjoying what is good and forbidding what is evil. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to buttress the central theme also offers us examples from nature. That's the introduction of science. The science that we see out there. And each sign speaks to us the language of la ilaha illallah, except that we don't know how to read it. Every atom, every galaxy, every universe, every electron, every proton, every string says la ilaha illallah, but we don't know how to read it. Surah Al-Baqarah points to those ayahs as well. And then it goes into a crescendo, the ayat al-Kursi. Allahu la ilaha illahu. Hu Allahu ladhi la ilaha illahu. You can stop right there. When you say huwa, ahu Allah, you can stop right there because no matter how many lectures you give, how many books you write, how many scholars you bring in, how many awliya Allah you bring, indeed, no matter how many angels you bring, you cannot untangle the secrets of Huwa. 
it reaches that crescendo. And having reached that crescendo, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then buttresses it further, giving examples from the life of our Prophet, the father of all prophets, if you will, Ibrahim alayhi salam. And then it ends with an appeal for the creation of a community of nations, a community of believers, a community of belief. The last two ayahs of the Quran of, of Surah Al-Baqarah were not revealed to anyone else except our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa These are the seven themes in Surah Al-Baqarah. Now let's see how we can somehow throw some light on these. It's impossible to do justice to even one of them, but I want to offer an introduction so that our young people go back with the belief that it's so easy, it's so clear, it's so obvious that even I can go back and now read Surah Al-Baqarah and as Surah Al-Baqarah is like a mini Quran, go back and study the Quran in a thematic way, <coughs> leading to the central theme of La ilaha illallah. <coughs> See, it begins with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, and then it says Alif Lam Mim. No one knows the meaning of Alif Lam Mim, but I understand it. It's only one understanding from Allah to Lu to Muhammad, or from Allah to Muhammad. No one knows the meaning. It's just my humble understanding of it. Alif Lam Mim, the radical kitab. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says. Hazal Kitab no, does not say that. That is the book. Dhalikal Kitab, we're referring to Umul Kitab, out there. Aloha Mahfuz. It is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a word from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the beginning, it establishes the continuity of all religion. Only Islam does that. That book combines the books of all the books that have been revealed from the time of Adam salam to the final book, the Quran, revealed to our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa The it says there is no, no ambiguity, it's clear. It's clear as daylight. It's there for anybody to understand and yet people read about the Quran, they come back and they say, it's too long, I don't understand it, it doesn't have any theme, it, there's a theme in there. There is no crookedness in it, there is no ambiguity in it, it's all clear, for even a child can understand it, to the extent that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him the ability to understand, of course, a great scholar will see multiple meanings in it. And an awliya Allah will read one single ayah and probably lose his senses. And of course the Prophet وسلم, when he said, if you knew what I knew, you would sleep but little and you would cry a lot. Because he read the huruf. They were revealed to him the pristine format. For what? The Quran is a book of guidance. It is not a book of history. It is not a book of science. There is history in it. There is science in it, but the science and history is a supportive embodiment of the central theme, La ilaha illallah. See, the study of the Quran, one can think of it as resting upon three legs. One is the internal ethos of Islam, what is in the heart. Starts with La ilaha illallah. Only the heart knows that. The names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second name, second leg is the nature, science. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us in the science on the outside. And the third one is history, the unfolding struggle of man on this earth. So that through it we understand. For whom? For those who are conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Quran opens itself to those who are conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who believe in Him, who are afraid of Him, and who have faith in the hereafter, that which is unknown, that which is beyond our perception. These are the prerequisites to understanding the Quran. 
huda lil muttaqina alladhina yu'minuna bil ghayb wa yuqimuna as-salata wa mimma razaqnahum yunfiqun and what's the first thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do is to establish salat prayer believe have faith faith is the dynamic principle of a civilization when there is no faith there is no civilization when there is faith you have the possibility of a civilization and the next thing what is it that a believer is supposed to do to pray if there is to be a community of believers christians jews muslims any other believers it has to be on the basis of prayer and what's the next thing to break of that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you and give it to the other. To break. It's in the sense of taking a piece of bread and sharing it with a man or a woman, a lady who has who is visiting your home. The breaking of the bread. See, these are the fundamentals Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Baqarah has studied again and again in addition to the appeal for faith, for belief. The emphasis on prayer. The emphasis on charity appears again and again. <coughs> then, in the very first aspect of Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala divides humankind into three. Those who have faith, those who do not have faith, and those who say they have faith, but they do not have faith. They deceive themselves and it ratchet back to them. Then in the second one, let me spend a little time in the next five minutes on the creation of Adam. Because Adam is in you. You are Adam. I am Adam. Every sister is Adam. Adam alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates him. In that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has introduced himself as the creator. Allahu khaliqul bari. Allah is the khaliq and he is the body. Namely he creates from nothing. Allahu khaliqul bari ul musabbiru lahu asma'ul husna. Not only has he created, he created Adam in the most beautiful form. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala breathed into him of his own ruh and taught him the names. If you are a philosopher, people want to define humankind. And at the minimum, I'm going to spend about two or three minutes on this because it's very important for the young people to understand there's so much confusion about who Adam is. What makes us human? <coughs> and the so-called theory of evolution. I will make some comments about that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught him the names. Therefore, the philosophers can say, I know, therefore I am. What were those names? Those were the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah turns to the angels and he asks them, tell me the names if you know them. And the angels say, Ya Allah, we don't know the names. We know only what you taught us. Angels do not know what Adam knows. You have the propensity for, the capability for learning that the angels do not. Knowledge is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I know, therefore I am, is one definition of humankind. Then he asked the angels to bow down before Adam. They do. Except Iblis, here is the introduction of Iblis. Poor Iblis. One has to feel sorry for him. All he sees before him is one who is made of turab, one who is made of clay. He does not see the ruh that has been infused into Adam. And he's confused. He refuses. He exercises his will against the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's condemned. The introduction of Adam, the introduction of Iblis. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises Adam and his zawja to stay in a state of felicity in this garden of bliss but not to go near the tree. And what is the tree? One can talk about that for ages also. For the time being, let's not go there. Iblis enters into the picture and he convinces them 
that if you go near the tree and eat of the fruit, you will attain eternity. Otherwise, eternity is going to be denied to you. Adam and Eve err. There, it is the exercise of will, the free will. So a philosopher can say, I will, therefore I am. That's what Nietzsche said. That's what the European philosophers say. I will, therefore I am. And therefore that means to say that it forms the ethical basis of the struggle of man on earth. Because mankind is able to choose the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even though there is the handicap of the distraction to Iblis. The ethical onset of history. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends them onto earth. Iblis and Adam and his progeny together. And then there is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after Adam repents and learns the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another definition of Adam, you and I, is that we can turn, we have a heart, the al, which means to turn. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turns, the al turns, they turn to each other. Another definition of you and I, of Adam, is that he who turns, who turns towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or who turns away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I turn, therefore I am. Then he comes down to the earth and Allah promises him there will be to you hidayah from time to time. If you follow this hidayah, then you will attain to a felicity. And at the same time, along with him, he sends this distractor, Iblis, whose job it is eternally to condemn humankind into this tazabza, into this struggle, to distract him, to promise him poverty, to pr promise him nothingness, to distract him, to drag him into fahash, to drag him into that which is not good. And when humankind overcomes that, he rises to the highest of the high. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَ الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ when he does not, he follows the lead of Iblis, of Shaitan. All of these are in those ten ayahs. The definition of Adam, the introduction of Iblis, what Adam can do and cannot do, and ask all the scholars of the world in ten sentences to describe the nature of man, the nature of Iblis, some of the aspects, attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what the angels can do and cannot do. Let's see if they can come up with even one million, million portion of it. And yet people say, where is the miracle in the Quran? In ten sentences from the 29 to the 39, Ayas, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you a definition of what makes us human. And you see, people who believe in the theory of evolution, they lose themselves even before they get started. Why? Because they have not defined what they're looking for. If you're a scientist, you must first ask yourself, what am I looking for? If you don't know what you're looking for, what you're going to find? If you're going to look for a creature without tail, does that tell you what a human is? Is that what defines your humanity, man or a woman? Is it not the propensity of knowledge? The fact that we know the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we are riding on that knowledge that Allah gives us, able to even go up to heaven. Is that not what defines us? Is it not that we are able to turn even after making an error towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is that not what defines our humanity? Is it not our will that defines humanity? Is it not that we have been bestowed something that has not given, been given to the angels? Is that not what defines humanity? Define humankind first. What is man? What are you looking for? Then go back and look for him. Maybe you will come up and ask it. You won't. Because it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See, the theory of evolution loses out even before it gets started. It's unscientific. It's a good theory. It's elegant. Makes a lot of people turn their heads. I'll have to stop here by again recapping and appealing to especially the young people 
Study the Quran. There are multiple ways of studying the Quran. The best way is, of course, the way it was revealed. Start with Surah Al-Fatiha and go to Surah Al-Nas. That is the best way. That's the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed it through our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But if you have difficulty for children, for instance, they start out with the short surahs towards the end. There is barakah in the last sixth of the Quran, the last 19 surahs of the Quran. Starting with ikhrab, ifni rabbika lazi khalaq. The last sixth of the Quran, the last 19 surahs of the Quran. Or you can study it thematically. If you're a scientist, you can look for the ayahs relating to science and walk back, right? Those arrows, those ayahs back to la ilaha illallah. If you're a historian or a sociologist, you can write the histories revealed in the Quran and the histories that we have accumulated since the Quran was revealed to our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and write back and back again to the focus, la ilaha illallah. If you are someone who is interested in the inner workings of the nafs, read what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed about the nafs, write it back to the basic, which is la ilaha illallah. No matter where you are in this paradigm, in this universe, you can write back these waves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one of the ayahs in Surah Al-Baqarah says, Sibakat Allah. See, many people, this is the last comment I want to make because of the absence of time. Our great forefathers, they have written good commentaries. Alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them jannah. But every commentary of the Quran is subject to the dynamic limitation of he who translates and makes a commentary on it. The Quran cannot be translated. They translated to mean, some, some translators said it means the religion of Allah, or baptism of Allah. Or they said it is the colors, the dyes that people used to make in the old days. <coughs> I have translated to mean the wavelengths of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends his wavelengths through every atom. And you don't have to look out there. There are billions and trillions of atoms within your own body. Listen to them. Ride those waves. Align your life to the wavelength of Allah. The wavelengths of Allah. That is the true alignment. That is what you read in the third focus, nature. The fourth focus, which is the onset of the community. The fifth one, which has to do with the interfaith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to our Prophet sallallahu to believe not only in what was revealed to him, but to what was revealed to all the Prophets before. كُلُّنْ آمَنَا بِاللَّهِ مَلَائِكَتِهِ كُتُبِهِ رُسُلِهِ لَا نُفَرِّقُ بَيْنَ أَحْدِمِ الرُسُلِهِ If you're engaged in interfaith, remember they're presented. We believe in all the faiths that were revealed before us, Going back to Adam al It's the constraint of time that prevents me from going deeper into it. There are oceans, oceans in every one of them. Oceans in every aya, oceans in every hurt. And one can stand here and lecture for hours, days, and months together. I end with the appeal, as I always do, to everyone, to make friends with the Quran. Study it. That's your friend. That's your guidance. You'll find the answers therein for all the problems we face in the world and certainly in this land of America. La khalu khalu haza was the khalu khalu. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihim kareem Inna Allah wa malayukatahum Yusalluna ala al-Nabi Ya ayuhal-Ladhina amanin Sallu alayhi wa sallamu wa taslima
اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل محمد ربنا لا تزيغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا لا تواخذنا إن نسينا أو ربطنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسلام كما حملت وضع الذين لقبلنا ربنا ولا تحمل لنا ما لا تحصلنا به وأفوانا وفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على الخوم الكافرين برحمة بيانا إن الله يعمر بالقدر والإحسان وينتاز القربة وينحى عن الفحشاء والنفق الفغي يغيركم لعلكم تذكرون واسكر الله وأخي مسلم